So I've, ha I've been having problems with this tractor uh, after using it for a couple hours when I'm using a hydraulic implement uh, raising and lowering the implement uh, after a while I'll get the caution light up on the dash and then I'll get the stop light with the alarm and I was trying to troubleshoot it could be a, like five different things per the manual um, and then whenever I'm plowing I don't get the caution light and the stop light I start getting the transmission light and I think it is due to the hydraulic temperature I think the hydraulics are overheating the engines fine it's not overheating I think it's the uh, hydraulic temperature and it could be a sensor issue but I think the hydraulics are getting are overheating and I'm thinking this right here I'm pretty sure is the hydraulic oil cooler this is a, a fuel cool oil a fuel cooler and uh, this is the hydraulic um, this unit right here so it looks like there's like four bolts here and two bolts up front I'm gonna see if I can take it out and these two hoses I'm gonna see if I can take it out of there and maybe flush it or see if it's plugged up because I think that's the reason my hydraulics keep overheating and it takes forever for them to cool down and I can't get anything done I would have that back field like halfway plowed but I have to sit here and and wait so and to have John Deere come out and look at it costs you your right arm and your left leg so trying to just pull this out and diagnose it myself but I just need to get this backfield planted I'm out of here in a week and a half for a couple months and I got to get it done and here's the hydraulic oil cooler there's two bolts on both sides here they're 13 millimeters and one on each side down here which releases this bracket with the fuel cooler and then it's the two hoses come off and slides out the side i'm going to take it and try to flush it so what i'm about to do here you guys might not agree with because uh putting water and uh, hydraulic oil isn't the best but it's it's copper all the way through so it's the same as water line um, and I'll get all the water out of it and you know it's gonna have fluid gun oil going back in it but I gotta I'm gonna put the pressure washer I'm in a car washer I'm gonna put the pressure washer in there and make sure that's not clogged up and water comes out the other side also I guess there's a uh, a bypass valve that I could have an issue with but uh because when I took this off the tractor barely and there was fluid that came out of the lines that was hot but there was like no fluid that came out of this radiator so I don't know if it drains back down with gravity but I felt like there should have been more fluid in it so we'll see what happens so let's see what happens we're the this thing out It did come out like dirty, like plugged up. I don't know, hopefully, hopefully there was something lodged in there and it's a simple fix like this. Alright, so it's been mist and rain for about an hour now. My weather radar doesn't really show much in the way of weather except for I guess this little bit that uh, seems like it's the sky's getting a little bit lighter but it's been going on for about an hour hopefully the ground's not too saturated back there at this point but it's been a drizzle for about an hour so it's getting kind of wet uh, I got the uh, got the oil cooler back in here uh, like I said it's just four bolts on the side 
and two on either side down here that mount this fuel cooler. And then the, I took these clamps off, real simple. It took maybe 20 minutes tops to get it out and put it back in. And before I put these hoses back on, I wanted to make sure it had flow to the cooler. Um, and when I started the tractor, I had the hoses disconnected and it gushed out like it should. Because I didn't know if there was a, a bypass valve or anything before this that maybe it's not even sending fluid to the oil cooler. But uh, it's getting oil to the oil cooler. So if it continues to happen, I don't think the oil cooler is my problem at that point. Um, the other thing is I can get the messages re uh, read, but I'll either have to take the tractor to John Deere or John Deere has to come out here and it's like 90 bucks an hour. Um, of course, I don't know. They said that you can't buy a reader. It has to be John Deere and I could see that because then they got you, which is BS. You can't like diagnose your own problems and fix them. You got to spend $90 an hour from when they leave the dealer to come to your place and get back. That's just complete BS. Um, if New Holland or Case had readers that you could buy, or if you guys know, does John? Could you have? Could is there a um, reader out there that you can buy that will read codes on John Deere tractors? Uh, I'm not familiar with it, but uh, if Case or New Holland made a tractor and you could buy a reader and fix the problems yourself, I would probably go with one of those tractors instead of a green one, but. We'll see what happens. I'm late checking it now. I know if I don't put it on the video, somebody will comment and say, oh, you gotta leak check it. So. Nothing's leaking. 